The quantum theory says the river of time can fork into many rivers to create parallel realities. Multiverse, one of the most debatable concepts that is considered to be wild, imaginary, and not real. Yet, many brilliant scientists argue that this concept is 100% true and real. And if you pay attention to this video, you might realize that for us humans to exist, the multiverse must exist. There could be a universe where you have a twin brother or a twin sister. Another universe where you could be a billionaire. Another universe where you could be a mass murderer. And believe it or not, you can calculate that number using quantum mechanics. What if I told you that there are infinite versions of you living in parallel universes right at this very moment? This may sound like science fiction kinds of stuff, but some of the world's most brilliant minds believe that the concept of the multiverse is not only possible, but necessary to explain some of the biggest mysteries of our universe. Because scientists believe that the multiverse is the only logical explanation for our entire existence. For the existence of dark matter to the fine-tuning of physical constants, the multiverse theory offers answers that we may never find in our own universe. We do believe that at the beginning of time there was chaos. All these world lines colliding, quantum fluctuations taking place everywhere. And out of that came our classical world. And Einstein says that our universe is a bubble expanding that peels off a baby bubble. Or perhaps two bubbles collide, giving you a bigger bubble. And we think that is the Big Bang. Most of these bubbles pop into existence and pop right back into the vacuum, never to be seen again. And so the vacuum, that is a state of nothingness, is teeming with bubble universes being created and destroyed. No matter how much we gaze out into the universe with our super high-tech gadgets, we might never be able to find its edge. It's like looking for the end of a rainbow or the bottom of a bottomless pit. Space just keeps going, spreading, and expanding. The universe has mainly two things, matter and radiation. And if you look closely enough, you'll see the indicating signs of an expanding universe, like galaxies that grow in size and number faster than you can imagine. It's almost like the universe is trying to tell us something, but what? But what exists outside this visible universe? Is there emptiness behind the light signals that have come to us since the Big Bang? Or is there actually a multiverse that is mysterious that is beyond our understanding? Unless there is a significant flaw in our knowledge of the universe, the multiverse has to be the solution. Here's why. You see, at the core of the multiverse theory lies a simple yet profound idea that our universe is not unique or special in any way. Just as the Earth, the Sun, and the Milky Way are not located in any privileged position in the cosmos, neither is any other location. The multiverse theory takes this concept even further, suggesting that there is nothing exceptional about the entire visible universe and that it is just one of many possible realities. Our observable universe is like a tiny microbe in a vast ocean of unobservable space, which is why I absolutely understand why it might feel tough to wrap your head around the idea of a multiverse, and it makes sense to feel doubtful about whether we can ever know for sure if it's real. See, in fields like physics and astronomy, we rely on observable and measurable evidence to support our theories. But when it comes to something that exists beyond what we can see and leaves no trace in our universe, it's a real challenge to find any concrete proof. So the concept of a multiverse seems like it might be one of those things that we can't really test. We know that some things are true even if we can't see them directly. Take gravitational waves for instance. Before we actually detected them, we knew they had to exist because we could observe their effects on binary pulsars. These are two neutron stars that orbit each other and seem to have shorter periods of revolution. We figured that something must be taking away their energy, and gravitational waves seem like the most plausible explanation based on what we already knew. Basically, the LIGO and Virgo Observatory recently confirmed the existence of gravitational waves through direct detection, but we already knew they had to exist because of other evidence. Some folks might still be convinced that this other evidence was enough to prove that gravitational waves exist. For example, we observed binary pulsars emitting gravitational waves, but LIGO and Virgo didn't detect the waves from those pulsars. But just because we can't see it doesn't mean that it's not there. If we can't see the multiverse with our own eyes, then how can we know it's real? 
What clues in indirect ways do we have which shows that there's more to the universe than what we can observe? And how can we be sure that our universe is just one of many that exist within the multiverse? We learn about the universe by observing it, just like how we learn about the world by exploring it. When we gaze into the far reaches of the observable universe, we find something fascinating. The light rays that were emitted from the earliest times, which we call the cosmic microwave background, make unique and intriguing patterns on the sky. These patterns tell us a lot about the universe we live in. They reveal the temperature and density variations that existed when the universe was born, the types of matter and energy that make it up, and even the geometry of space itself. In short, patterns in the sky provide us with valuable insights into the fundamental nature of the universe, helping us to better understand our place in the cosmos. So, from what we can gather, it seems that space doesn't have a positive or negative curve like a sphere or a saddle. Instead, it appears to be flat, which means that the unobservable universe is probably way bigger than we can see. And here's the thing. It doesn't loop back on itself or have any empty spaces. If it is curved, then its diameter is likely hundreds of times larger than we can observe. As time moves forward, we're constantly uncovering more and more parts of the universe that look just like ours. It all fits with the big picture we have in mind. It's conceivable that there's more to the universe than what we can currently observe, but there's no concrete proof of it and it doesn't necessarily mean there's a multiverse. However, there are two concrete concepts in physics, cosmic inflation and quantum physics, that have been thoroughly established and widely accepted. Cosmic inflation is a scientific theory that helps explain how the hot Big Bang may have happened. It suggests that there is a limit to how hot and dense the early stages of the universe could have been during its expansion, instead of starting from a single point. If the temperature had gotten incredibly high in the past, we would be able to see signs of it now, but we don't. These are 1. Significant temperature fluctuations in the early stages. 2. The variability in seed density is constrained by the size of the cosmic horizon. Three. Additionally, there exist high-energy remnants of the early universe that have not been fully utilized, such as magnetic monopoles. These signs that scientists were expecting to see are totally missing. This is a big deal because it implies that the universe didn't reach the really high temperatures that were previously assumed. It seems that something else happened before the Big Bang to set things up the way they are now. And that's where my fellow space explorers, cosmic inflation comes in. You see, this concept was meant to solve a bunch of confusing issues that came along with the Big Bang Theory. Luckily, it did more than just fix those problems. It actually made predictions that could be tested and observed within our universe. Big Bangs happen all the time. Even as we are speaking, multiverses are being created. That's called internal inflation. Inflation is basically the creation of a baby universe. But these baby universes are being created all the time in this bubble bath of universes. Each universe is perhaps with the laws of physics slightly altered, with the flow of time slightly different. Eternal inflation, this multiverse idea, is the dominant theory in cosmology today. We have seen some really interesting things in our study of the universe. One of these is that there seems to be a lack of spatial curvature, which is something that we predicted. We've also noticed that the initial fluctuations in the universe seem to be adiabatic in nature, which means they follow a certain pattern. Another thing we found is that the spectrum and magnitude of the initial fluctuations match what we expect if inflation theory is correct. Finally. We've seen some fluctuations that are even bigger than what we thought was possible, which again lines up with what inflation theory tells us. It's all very intriguing. Even though we don't know everything about inflation, we do have a lot of evidence showing that it happened in the early universe. This inflation period basically kickstarted the Big Bang and created a bunch of fluctuations that eventually led to the cosmic web we see today. As far as we know, only inflation can explain what we've observed about the universe and make predictions that match up what we see. Now, some of you might say, why is this a big deal? You might not be impressed by the idea that a small part of space expanded through inflation to become much larger volume, which happens to contain the part of the universe we can see. Even if this idea is correct, it only tells us that there's more to the universe beyond what we can observe. And you might absolutely say that it doesn't necessarily mean that there are multiple universes. I absolutely agree with you. 
But don't forget that there's one more thing we need to consider, the concept of quantum physics. You see, scientists treat inflation, the rapid expansion of the universe after the Big Bang, as a field. This means it behaves like other particles in the universe and follow certain rules. These rules are part of what's called quantum field theory, which governs how particles interact with each other. The quantum world can be really strange and has a lot of unusual rules, but one of the most important for our purpose is the rule of quantum uncertainty. Usually, we think of uncertainty as a kind of relationship between two things, like momentum and position or energy and time. But there's another kind of uncertainty that's built into the very fabric of the universe called quantum uncertainty. Basically, it means that even if we know the value of a field at one point in time, as time goes on, the value becomes less certain and we can only guess at what it might be. It's kind of like trying to predict the weather. Even if you know what the weather is like right now, you can't be totally sure what it will be like in an hour or a day. To explain it in simpler terms, the value associated with a quantum field gradually spreads out as time passes. So, there are two big things we need to talk about. Cosmic inflation that states the universe is getting bigger and bigger by every second. And we also have this thing called quantum physics that explains how really tiny things work. Imagine the expansion of the universe as a ball that's moving super slowly on a hill that's totally flat. As long as the ball stays on top of the hill, the universe keeps expanding. But when the ball finally rolls off the edge of the flat part, it falls down into the valley below. That's when all the energy from the expansion itself turns into matter and energy according to the rules of quantum physics. So, when the universe was inflating, it went through this thing called reheating that marked the end of the cosmic inflation and brought about the hot Big Bang that we all know. But here's the catch. During inflation, the field value changed slowly and differently in different regions, spreading out randomly in various directions. As a result, inflation ended quickly in some places, but more slowly in others. One important thing to note here is that the existence of a multiverse seems pretty certain and inevitable. You see, when inflation ends suddenly, it leads to a Big Bang and a universe out of it, and some parts of it might look a bit like our own observable universe, but beyond that, there are other regions where inflation doesn't stop as quickly, and they keep expanding for much longer. In some parts of the universe, quantum spreading can cause inflation to stop, and when this happens, it creates a Big Bang that leads to an even bigger universe. Within this vast universe, there may be a small area that looks similar to what we can observe. The other regions in the universe are not only getting bigger, but they're also growing. Scientists figured out how quickly these regions are expanding and compared it to how often new universes form and Big Bangs happen. When the predictions made by inflation match what we observe in the universe, it means that the new universe and expanding regions are forming faster than inflation can stop them. The multiverse is an idea that suggests there are massive universes out there that are way bigger than what we can observe. These universes are constantly being created in an ever-expanding space. It's not something we can test out scientifically, but more of a theoretical consequence that comes from our current understanding of physics. We're not sure if the laws of physics are the same in these other universes as they are in ours, but when it comes to the universe, there's a lot we don't know yet, but we're always learning more. Scientists have found that if the universe goes through a period of rapid expansion and follows the rules of quantum physics, then there must be a multiverse out there. That means there are probably countless other universes, just like ours, or maybe different in some way, that exist alongside our own. Of course science is always evolving, and we might learn new things in the future that change our understanding of the universe, but for now, everything we've found so far supports the idea of a multiverse, just like the idea of gravitational waves. It's a pretty mind-bending concept, but it's exciting to think about all the possibilities out there beyond our own little corner of the cosmos. But what if the concept of a multiverse is not about other universes outside of our universe, but instead inside our own? What I mean by that is, what if, instead of multiple universes existing separately, they exist inside one another, like one universe inside of another universe, and so on? And scientists are claiming that there's a catalyst that might be able to do this. Pretty insane, right? Just like we don't know what lies beyond the observable universe, there's another interesting question that we humans have not been able to find an answer to. However, this could possibly provide more answer to the mystery of multiverse, and that is, what lies inside a black hole? 
So, could black holes be a key to a whole new collection of universes? Watch this video and find out.